Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Bandai's High Metal R Super VF1J Max and Miria Customs. The Max toy was released in November 2016 for 8600 yen. Miria followed as a Tamashi exclusive in March 2017 for 9288 inclusive of tax and domestic shipping. As with previous Bandai High Metal R releases, these toys come in lovely Tenjin decorated boxes. And rather than Miria's box just being a recoloring of Max's box, it shows a completely fresh art, which is a different perspective on the same scene from Max's box, which is pretty cool. Inside the box, you get a ton of great stuff, as you always do with these Bandai High Metal R VF1 releases. There's five fixed post hands, two of which uh, involve holding the pistol grip. There's intake turbine detail. There's a set of reaction missiles for each wing. There's a clear canopy, which is necessary for transformation. I'll obviously discuss that a little bit in this review. There's three display stand adapter, three landing gear, one front and two rear, cavity fillers for the neck and shoulder, a pilot figure, gun, three sets of wings, there's also one of those sets is Batroid specific. Then we have a second tray that has the Do You Remember Love Style box missiles, the super parts, the arm for the display stand as well as an extension and peg connecting point. And the base of the display stand is behind that tray and behind everything is a set of instructions. One of the really cool things about these Super VF1J releases is the included display stands, which has nice artwork of the characters, which is good to see. It is just a basic Tamashi display stand, though. It's got a pivot at the back here. You can also swivel at that point, and it has a pivot at the top, and it connects via a round peg, so you can spin this around. If you wanted to do some banking, you certainly could, uh, like so. Now, one of the common complaints that I've been making about these uh, display stand adapters for a while is that Bandai has stopped including the adapter that goes for use without super parts. So this is the super parts adapter. It plugs onto the toy right at the elbow armors there. Uh, without those elbow armors on, it just kind of slides in and it won't lock into place. These locks, the little teeth in the back, won't make it into the arms. So instead it just kind of goes on and kind of sits there by pressure of gravity and doesn't really lock into place. So it will slide off the display stand if you try to angle it uh, a little too extremely, which is disappointing. Uh, Bandai could easily address that and they continue to fail to do so. You also get an extension and a peg. So if this is too low for you, you can bring it up a little bit higher, peg it right back in. Obviously the higher you get, the higher your center of gravity uh, and the more issues you will create. Also, this top peg does it, is just a friction peg. So uh, you can have the whole thing topple over on you pretty quickly, especially if that starts getting loose on you. But the display stands are certainly a nice plus, uh, especially if you're not a fan of using those uh, landing gear, which are not integrated into the toy. I have now done several Bandai High Metal RVF1 reviews. So to try to keep this one fresh, I'm gonna to try to make it a much more comparison heavy review. So we'll start off by taking a look at the High Metal R toy versus the Arcadia VF1 Myria toy. You can see right away, much, much deeper red on the Arcadia, more of a crimson color, whereas the Bandai High Metal R is coming off uh, as a more true red color, while the gray of the trim contrasts with the white on the Arcadia. Now if we bring these toys over like this, you can see that Arcadia actually painted white in the back area. Bandai left that red. Bandai here uh, seems to be going for that playability factor because on the Arcadia, this white paint scratches off very easily and is a big durability issue. Now you can see Arcadia and Bandai both have cavity filler pieces that are available from the top. Uh, the Bandai cavity filler also comes around to the front, which is nice to see. You don't get that on the Arcadia or Yamato V2 toys, although they did have these side fillers on the Arcadia toy at least, uh, and you just have a gap there on the Bandai. So there's uh, one plus for the Arcadia. Now, beyond that, Bandai did a few things that are pretty cool, particularly in Batroid mode. 
first and foremost, you get these extending hips that allow you to get a huge rock and outward angle and it just really adds to the fun factor and the kind of poses that you can pull off. The other thing Bandai did was give you wings that you could swap out and then you could plug in these Batroid specific wings in the back to get more of that anime look that would otherwise be impossible to accomplish. The High Metal R also has a ball jointed head. So while it does have head lasers that pop off way too easily, uh, it does allow you to rock and then you can twist uh, and go up and down. So yeah, all the things you could want from the head, except for head lasers that pop off when you touch them, uh, the High Metal R has. Now, obviously, the Arcadia does not suffer from head lasers that pop off. It has uh, the normal rotation and up and down. So the only thing you're really lacking is the ability to cock the head a little bit. And it's not like you have a huge range of motion on the High Metal R for that. Otherwise, joints all very, very similar. Not much to add between either one of these. The one thing that jumps out at you right away in Batroid mode is how poor the integrated hands are on the High Metal R toy. Whereas on the Arcadia toy, you get such good articulated hands uh, that have a nice size to them. This isn't like the Yamada 148 where the articulated hands were undersized. These hands are great uh, and you don't really feel the need to go pull out fixed posed hands. So score one there for the Arcadia, but otherwise the Bandai High Metal R in Batroid mode is a ton of fun. We'll just run through articulation real quickly. Good angle, good range of movement on the elbow. This is a ball jointed hand, so it twists, and again, you would probably pop it out. You have that ability to come way back, way forward, and I showed you what the hip can do. There's a gear walk joint, a knee, the knee goes back 90 degrees and also twists there and the foot can come forward, back. And it, one more thing that the Bandai High Metal R has is the ability to articulate this front toe. So that's pretty cool too. And there you go. So yeah, you can pull it out or push it in. Obviously, if you're going to like gear walk mode, you'll pull it out. So just a huge range of movement all along the joints that make the High Metal R a lot of fun in Batroid mode. Uh, so it does well to hold its own. Here are the main 1-100 scale players all together in one place. We have the Takatoku, the Toinami, the Bandai Original High Metal, and the Bandai High Metal R. The Takatoku kicked things off. It's got a metal chest plate to it. Gives it some heft, although it is kind of deceivingly light. There are integrated landing gear, but that obviously causes some issues now in Batroid mode. There's a sticker for the visor and applied stickers on the toy, some of which are applied a little bit better than others. Uh, there's no ability to attach super parts or GBP. There's no um, covers for these screw holes, obviously. Uh, it has very limited articulation, but for what it was, it was kind of cool back in the day. The big bummer on this toy was that there's no twist point in the arms and obviously no twist point in the knees so that limited how much fun you could have. The Toinami toy came next chronologically. It added the ability to do super parts and also a GBP later. Uh, it's cheap originally when it first came out was $19.99 a pop which is uh, great for those of you who just wanted to have fun and not worry too much about your toy. Maybe customize a paint scheme. You do get what you pay for though. There's no metal. It's pretty flimsy. It broke very easily at all of the joints uh, and quickly became a sloppy mess in most cases. So uh, it's fun uh, for a little while and then it falls apart on you and you're glad you only spent $19.99 on it. Articulation is pretty good. Uh, so that was good to see again. You can have fun with it. Then came Bandai's high metal toys, which were more expensive than the Toinami. So you could argue that they kind of had their own little niche to them. They have things like optional hands, which the Toinami also had. Uh, they do work with super parts. There was no GBP originally available for the original high metal toys. They have a painted visor. They have pretty thin biceps. The only metal is the feet, but if you were to weigh the two of these 
Uh, the high metal toy is definitely a much heftier toy. It had things like swap out intakes for intake uh, fan detail in fighter mode uh, and a locking backpack and some nice painted apps to it. There's no stickers that came with this unlike the Toynami and the Takotoku. So that was a premium option. The big bummer with this toy is um, the landing gear are not integrated. They're swap out like the Toynami. Same with the heat shield, like the Toynami, it's a swap out part. And the gun has some swapping that happens between modes. So that was a bummer, although it's worth pointing out that the Takatoka toy frequently just didn't come with a gun, although you could see it could hold a gun. If you had one, it couldn't have one in fighter mode. Then we got the High Metal R toy. Many of the cool things about the original High Metal, but now you have a removable nose cone. It works with the GBP, fatter biceps, metal on the joints. It's much stiffer. In fact, it's so much stiffer uh, that now parts pop off on you while you're transforming it and you just pop them right back on. Whereas the uh, previous toy was very smooth, a uh, little less resistance to the joints, so maybe it got loose on people. This is so stiff it uh, causes different problems. But you also now get a ball joint head, which you also got on the Toynami, but you didn't get on the original high metal toy. You got cavity fillers, uh, and uh, some mini wings for a better looking Batroid mode, so different accessories that came with it. So the High Metal R is now the top of the line. You can see the Bandai did make some paint app changes. They went with bright white in, uh, in, on the original, they went with gray, they went with slanted chest stripes on the High Metal R, they went with squared off chest stripes on the original High Metal, you now get a plastic clear visor instead of a painted visor. Uh, and then turning the toy around, you lost the black paint app here. And again, more gray instead of white. But that's about it. So a very incremental improvement over the original. But this is now your top of the line 1-100-ish toy. Now there's no doubt that the Arcadia toy is definitely a super premium toy, whereas the Bandai High Metal R is just premium for its scale. The Arcadia toy has three pieces of armor that are removable from the super parts. There is a leg armor, there is the backpack booster armor, and you can see nice detail there. We can just pop that on. And then there is this missile boom cover that goes on top. So really nice super parts on the Arcadia toy. They do have this uh, weird stabilizer that slides in underneath the boot backpack boosters, uh, but that's helpful because it makes this hook on top a lot less necessary. Uh, and using that hook, especially on uh, toys where they have some sort of paint on the tail fin, can give you a shiny pressure point. So. And that's not ideal, but the fact that though that little piece underneath the booster is there makes it so you need that hook a lot less, which is great. Now you'll also notice that I've attached the fixed posed hands to the Arcadia. It only comes with TV style fixed posed hands. The Bandai High Metal R has a much larger suite of fixed posed hands. Here's the little detail on that backpack booster. That's all it's got. So we'll just cover that up now. And it just has a peg that goes down the middle. A little finicky, there it goes. Okay, now both of these toys do have articulated nozzles on their boosters. But one of the big things that you've probably noticed, and I haven't talked about yet, the paint scheme of the super parts on the Bandai High Metal R, which is definitely controversial. The Arcadia toy, you have this kind of standard blue as the accent pieces. On the Bandai High Metal R, you've got this light gray that matches the light gray on the shoulders and hands and legs. Uh, and then you've got the light gray on the back again where this is darker. But this accent piece here is really random and totally new. Uh, there is some sort of an animation error or maybe, maybe it was intentional. There's one episode where it looks like there's a little bit of light gray on the bottom of the fast packs. So maybe that's what they're doing. You also get Do You Remember Love Style Hands, and I mentioned those kind of in the same sentence, because Bandai likes to blur the line between what is the Do You Remember Love universe and what is the TV universe. 
where Arcadia does a very good job of keeping those two things far apart from each other. So with this Bandai toy possibly being more a high, a do you remember love VF1J, although that was clearly never seen, it opens the door for the interpretation, right? So they've done something different and you can either go with it as being from that one TV episode where it was animated a little differently, or maybe just say this is how it would look in the Do You Remember Love universe. To that end, you have red shoulder armors on the High Metal R. They are gray on the Arcadia toy. The Arcadia toy has the proper TV style armors that come straight down and away from the forearm. The High Metal R has the Do You Remember Love style armors. It's just a quick repaint, basically, of the existing Do You Remember Love strike parts. So that is, again, not correct if it's a TV style, but if it's Do You Remember Love, it does make sense. One thing Bandai does a little bit better than Arcadia is how far those arm armors go. They're supposed to stop a little after the arm like it does on the high metal. Arcadia like to go with a longer interpretation of that armor. Uh, it is what it is, not really a bad thing. It works just fine and it looks pretty impressive from the front. So subjectively, that might be up your alley a little bit more. So the super parts on this toy stay on very well. That's great. The only thing that you can do is you knock the backpack every now and then. They don't really lock into place as securely as you'd want. And that is a worry if this backpack hinge gets loose over time. You got the display stand, the display stand just goes right underneath the crotch here and latches onto the hips. It latches on pretty securely and really does add to the play value. So cheap but fun accessory. The Bandai High Metal R performs very admirably in Garawag mode. It's a lot of fun. You can handle it. It does pretty much everything that the more expensive Arcadia toy here does, obviously at a much lower price point. A lot of what the fun comes from is the ability to rock this hinge down right here, which gets you the clearance to do a whole lot with these arms which is oftentimes an issue with gear walk mode toys. So you're not running into the reaction missile, you're not running into the wing, you can get a nice shooting pose. You also have that gear walk joint that comes pretty far forward and the legs that sweep pretty far forward. And then the ability to rock that foot way back to get everything you need for an aggressive gear walk mode. So that's all good to see. Now the other thing we can do in gear walk mode, which I've failed to mention in Batroid mode, is stow that gun on the arm armor. You could also obviously stow the gun on the forearm itself. So here's Max's toy with the super parts on. Again, lots of fun. Highly recommend the High Metal R if you are a big fan of gear walk mode. So gear walk mode with or without the super parts, a lot of fun and enough articulation for you to get some sweet poses without needing the display stand. But you do get that display stand. So here's the toy just as it was. Here is that display stand. Again, the nice artwork on it. Here is the gear walk adapter right there. It just plugs in underneath in gear walk mode. And what this allows you to do, again, you have the swivel, you have the pivot, and you can rock at the top so you can get that nice flying, kind of coming to a screeching stop look that is so cool for gear walk mode. Now you might be thinking the Toy Nami toy also has a display stand. That display stand doesn't have a pivot or a swivel at the base and it connects in gear walk mode in the very back and what that ends up meaning is that it just droops forward. You can't get that sweet flying away pose or you can only get it for like a week when the toy is brand new and then after that it just does this so obviously that is not ideal and again very cheap toy versus a much more premium toy and you are getting what you pay for the high metal r toy does well for itself against larger competition in batroid mode but when you get to fighter mode you see where those smaller uh, scale leads to a lot more compromises. So here we have the Arcadia 160 again, much more fully featured. The canopy here was removable for transformation so it doesn't swing open. You do have some fairly decent pilot detail inside. Now moving over here you have an actual opening canopy with much nicer pilot detail inside. So that's a definite plus for Arcadia having that opening canopy. 
flipping the toy over. You'll notice that you do get TV and Do You Remember Love Style Missile with the Arcadia instead of just the Do You Remember Love Style Missiles with the High Metal R. The Arcadia also features a, a twist lock to make sure you are less likely to inadvertently knock the missiles off. The High Metal R toy, the missiles fit on there snugly enough, but you will knock them off accidentally, occasionally. You'll also notice the intake fan detail. Now on the Bandai High Metal R, you just kind of pull forward to remove a piece, and then you grab the optional piece and plug it in. On the Arcadia, it's a slightly more elegant solution. You just pop off the cover. You still end up having to store that cover somewhere, and it's pretty tricky to pop these things off. I get something in there, pop it free, and there you get that nice silver painted fan, uh, less obvious on the high metal R, a little darker there, no separate paint app on the fan. So again, the Bandai, not quite uh, as fully featured as the Arcadia. The Arcadia, the big difference here, there's that missile popping off that I mentioned. The big difference is the landing gear. So here we have integrated landing gear on the Arcadia toy. You have rubber wheels that spin. You have an articulated tow bar. The landing gear all lock in the forward position. There's nice transparent bay doors. Very high quality implementation of the landing gear on the Arcadia. The High Metal R, much, much less uh, thought and care in that area. Because again, tiny scale, but also cost cutting, I'm sure. So you have to remove the doors. So you have three parts there we're talking about. And they get replaced with three separate parts. So here we go, one, and these parts now, they don't have rubber wheels. They are painted to look attractive, so there's that, uh, but obviously not the same as having fully featured integrated landing gear like you do on the Arcadia. Also, we have the gun installed in fighter mode, and we did that by removing the handle of the gun. So there, there's no handle on there and it pops in. On the Arcadia toy, it actually plugs into place. And you can see, you can also knock these landing gear off. Obviously that's not gonna be a concern on the Arcadia. So here we have the gun here. We can remove that. This gun is very tight and transforms on its own. So that's really cool. Not happening on these smaller scale toys. So there you go. A list of compromises there. Otherwise, the High Metal R toy, I'll just pop all these missiles off, does do a good job of locking together. The arms lock together to the backpack. That keeps everything tight. It's nice and solid. So definite pluses there. The head tucks in nice and low. So it is a nice fighter mode. It's just when you compare it to how nice the Arcadia 160 V2 toys are uh, in fighter mode, you see a lot of those shortcomings a lot more. Now in comparison to the original high metal toy, which only came with TV style missiles versus the only do you remember love style missiles or reaction missiles here, uh, the fighter mode was very, very similar. There was a slightly different pilot figure inside. Now the pilot is removable on the high metal R, was not on the original high metal toy, but that's the only difference there. Flipping the toy over, you had unpainted landing gear bays versus dark painted landing gear bays on the high metal R toy. And on the front you had white painted front landing gear and then you have the blue and the black on the high metal R. So slight difference there, but really that's all we're talking about. The removable nose cone isn't really gonna do anything for you in fighter mode uh, and barely does anything for you in Batroid mode unless you have a GPP. So that's really the big difference there. If we go back and look at Toy Nami's toy, there are very significant differences that are trying to justify the price point. First and foremost is definitely the gappiness of the toy. You can see the high metal R toy comes together very, very tightly, whereas the Toy Nami has lots of big gaps in it. The overall quality of plastic is far superior on the high metal R toy. The Toy Nami toy does come with both Do You Remember Love and TV style weaponry, which is nice. 
Toynami's toy does not have legs that collapse or feet that collapse into the legs so the feet stick out much further. Also you can see that backpack just kind of floats on you on the Toynami and you don't have the ability to stow the fists. Of course I could just pop these fists off and put them back in the tray and that would be a much more attractive way of dealing with that. Now the landing gear on the Toynami toy are also different in that they have a bay that just a bay door that just flips over. So there's one less part associated with the landing gear. Of course, you also do get much less attractive landing gear, which I have not plugged in very well, apparently on my high metal R toy. Let's get those seated better. Okay, so you can see they are silver painted black wheels. They look much better than what you get on the Toynami toy. Also the gun, the gun attaches by removing the handle as you saw in the high metal R toy. On the Toynami toy you actually need another piece that connects to both arms and then the gun. Now least satisfying <clears throat> of the Toynami fighter mode is got to be the way the arms and legs attach. Most Toynami 1-100 figures have a manufacturing flaw, most as far as I can tell, with this piece right here. There's a little filler to the cavity that's supposed to be at the back of the leg but most often ends up at the front which means the tabs on the arms here won't connect unless you remove them from the shoulders. So fighter mode, uh, it ends up coming together but if your knees ever get loose then the plane will just split right in half on you because the arms aren't really attached to the shoulders anymore if you have this build defect. And you can check out my Toynami 1100 reviews uh, to see which toys I have that did have that build defect versus which ones that don't. And since the backpack doesn't fit in, you do get a lot more slop just in handling the toy. So no pilot figure here. Uh, definitely just not as good a scoped, sculpt overall. Uh, it can accommodate super parts. Uh, it can accommodate the GBP. The, those accessories exist again. Uh, but in fighter mode, you're definitely, this is a discount toy and it looks and feels that way. Now going back in time further to Takotoku, you do not have the ability to stow the gun. You don't have the ability to add weaponry. Uh, you don't have a cockpit. You just have that painted on cockpit, which you also saw in Batroid mode. Things don't latch together quite as securely, uh, but all the joints are stiff enough where it doesn't really matter that much. One thing to point out on the high metal R toys, look how well that head is recessed. Now I got a laser that's a little out of whack here, but that head recesses very nicely in there. On the Toynami toy, not so much. That head is drooping way down. And again, on the Takatoku toy, also way down. Now the benefit of both Toynami and Takatoku is these head lasers don't fall out on you. Uh, on the Toynami, they're individually articulated and you can pry them loose. Uh, on the high metal R toys and the high metal toys, they had a much greater propensity of just popping off during handling. Now, the high metal toys obviously have those intake turbine covers. You don't get that on Toynami. You don't get that on Takatoku. Takatoku obviously had the old school style vertical stabilizers that just kind of fold out and then pinch into place. Uh, and they don't have quite an accurate paint scheme. Uh, of course, for their day, very good. Uh, but if these days you're only looking for the best representation in a smaller format, then the high metal toys uh, clear champions. Both these toys do a really good job handling the super parts attached in fighter mode. The Bandai's only real weakness here is that there's nothing that locks the boosters in place. The original high metal actually had a lock. Uh, it got nerfed when we made it to the high metal R, maybe because they just thought that backpack hinge was stiff enough that it wasn't a big deal. And really, it only is an issue if you're shaking your toy upside down, which most people won't be doing. Now, with the Arcadia toy, you do have that brace that I mentioned in Batroid mode, and that prevents those boosters from going anywhere. And you can see very stiff, solid implementation all around on the Arcadia, but also nice implementation on the Bandai High Metal R there. So only those weaknesses we've already addressed as far as the regular fighter mode goes. Now, again, the High Metal R Super VF1J toys do come with a display stand. And one problem with the Arcadia and Yamato toys 
is that there is only uh, an Arcadia display stand and a Yamada launch arm. Uh, both have been out of production now for a while and are pretty expensive to get. With the high metal toys, even if you get one of the ones that doesn't come with a display stand like the Hikaru VF1J, uh, you can get display stands very cheaply. So that's a small plus for the Bandai high metal R there. Bandai continues to expand their high metal R offerings. There's going to be more releases in the future. So if you're looking for only the most complete VF1 line, it's not there yet. But when you consider that they also make enemy mecha and destroids that we've never seen in any other toy line, it's obviously a really compelling argument to start collecting these VF1s. And they make the argument easier by being very high quality, they feel great in your hand, they hold together well, and they look good. They're certainly the best option in the smaller scale arena. So do I recommend them? Yes, I absolutely do, provided you're not too bothered by that lack of integrated heat shield or landing gear. Check out my full article on anymoon.com, and as always, thanks for watching.